questions this begs is, you know, what's really getting funded here, and and how is it different from other development assistance? What what makes adaptation different from development? I get this question all the time, and I know you're grappling with it as well. Um, what's it, what, what do you think these days? What's your well, current thought? We, we, we grappled with this a lot, and I think a lot of people are. And yeah. I think ultimately, adaptation is, is built into development. Yeah. I mean, development is about growing food, producing energy, uh, making sure the cities that you build on the coasts and the floodplains don't get flooded. Uh, so you have to be, be building climate risk into everything you do in, in development. So it doesn't really make sense to, to say this is development and this is adaptation. Adaptation has to be woven in. I think what's different now is that we realize that the, the challenges are much greater than, than, than we thought. Yeah. Uh, not just the, the droughts and floods we've always uh, thought, but the fact that the sea level is rising and other things require us to take action now way ahead of when the, when the worst brunt of the, of the changes hit us. So in your view, what's, what's behind this, this very strong push to, to track how much is being spent on adaptation, how much is being spent on development? Yeah. From my perspective, it, it comes back to politics. And, and it's the global politics of the global climate change negotiations. Um, in the, the global convention on climate change, there's a very clear responsibility um, of the, the developed wealthier countries to support the adaptation of the poorer developing countries because it's the wealthy countries that are responsible for the pollution that causes this problem in the first place. Um, so with that responsibility on the table, there's a desire for accountability to be able to say country X supported the adaptation of country Y and to be very clear about that. Um, in the name of that clarity, there's, there's this drive for separating these two things from each other so that you can be clear about where money went and what it went toward. Um, but unfortunately, much as that separation would help in the accountability, it may not help get us to the results that we want um, in, the, the, in the end when we're actually implementing adaptation. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it, it's, it's completely understandable that, that uh, people want to track, you know, where is their money going? Is yeah. it going to what they, they said it would, would go to? Uh, but I think there are two big problems with this. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is, is an incentive problem, which is that, that really we care about results and not about how much we spend. If you focus on, on how much you're spending, uh, you could end up doing things that are very, very inefficient. Uh, but more fundamentally than that, I, I think that um, it's, it's conceptually, uh, in many cases, impossible to distinguish the spending on adaptation versus development. I think that, that in many people's minds, the, the idea, the, the metaphor is, is the seawall. So here we've got a, a city on the coast. Now we know that climate is changing, so let's build the seawall a bit higher. We can figure out how much did it cost to, to build the seawall higher. That's the cost of adaptation. Mm -hmm. But generally, it doesn't work like that. So my, my, uh, the clearest example I can think of is a, a World Bank project in Nicaragua. It was aimed at, at poor people in a rural, dry area of Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. And what they did is they gave uh, grants to households to help them get into non-farm businesses. Yeah. Uh, the project was very successful in getting people out of poverty. The, the households that got those grants uh, did better. Their incomes in, increased. Mm -hmm. But more than that, uh, when the droughts hit, as they do often in this area, the people with the grants uh, weathered those droughts. They, they didn't suffer uh, drops in, in consumption the way their neighbors did. And the reason was that they had, they had diversified out of agriculture, which is, of course, uh, climate sensitive, into things that were more resilient. So here you have one intervention that results both in poverty reduction and in increased climate resilience. And there's no meaningful way to say that, that this many dollars went to development, this many dollars went to resilience. It, it's, the, it's the joint outcome that's important. Yeah. And it's those joint outcomes that we really want. We, we want to look for those success stories and figure out how can we move forward both of these agendas because they're so intertwined. We also need to be on the lookout for the opposite case, the case where poverty is reduced but in a way that makes people less resilient, that puts them on a, a development track that may be more vulnerable to changes in the climate down the road. Uh, that's what we call maladaptation. And, um, making certain that we find both those success stories and the failures, frankly, so, so that we um, make certain that when we are 
putting forth investments in, in development, that they're being done in a way that is resilient and that's sustainable under a changing climate. One way to do that would be to, to find ways to really focus on results. I, I think mm -hmm. one of the reasons that, that we gravitate toward money is because it's, it's easy to count. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately we want to keep our eye on, are we, are we making progress? Mm -hmm. And I think that there are some, some very straightforward ways to do that. Uh, we know, for instance, that um, we're going to need strong institutions that, that are going to help us cope with the, the unpredictable things that are happening. Uh, we need good agricultural research and extension agencies to develop this, this, the seed varieties we'll need and to get them out to farmers. We could track, are those agencies working? Yeah. Uh, you're going to need really good weather systems. We can ask, are the weather stations up and working? Are people using the data in productive ways? Yeah. Um, we can look at what's happening to, to households. Our, our households, when the droughts hit, do households uh, ride those, those, uh, those droughts out? Are, are the systems in place to keep, keep, them, uh, keep them well fed? Or are they suffering? And we can track basic biophysical indicators. Are our countries, our water basins, drawing down their water faster than it's being, being replenished? Yeah. And, and these tracking systems are the really important ones, so to be tracking water, to be tracking population health, to be tracking the kinds of things you track through a census and through really good environmental monitoring and through meteorological services. This is more important than tracking money, I would say. Well, it's, it's doable. Let's figure out how to, how to do it. We can.